Climate Now, in collaboration with Copernicus. Hello and welcome to Climate Now, here for a special edition from the COP25 climate negotiations in Madrid. Coming up, we look back at 2019, an exceptional year, and ask how extreme can it get? And we look at the emissions gap, the difference between what was promised and what's really pumped into the atmosphere, plus the latest climate news from the Copernicus Climate Change Service. So to discuss the latest climate news, I am joined by Vincent Henri Perk from the Copernicus Atmosphere Monitoring Service and Max Dilley from the World Meteorological Organization. 2019 was a record year, but it's worth remembering at the start of the year it was minus 30 in North America with the polar vortex. Then we had plus 46 in France, a new record-breaking temperature. Is this the new normal? Are we going to have to get used to this? Well, uh, 2019 was uh, either the second or third warmest year in the historical record since uh, pre-industrial times. It was 1.1 degrees above the pre-industrial levels. Yes, and the surprise is that it's no surprise. Year after year, uh, records are broken and, and to some extent we get used to that. But if we take a little step back, uh, very likely the five last years will be the five hottest years on record, the 10 last years will be the 10 hottest years on, on record. Given all of that, how extreme actually can our weather and climate become? All these uh, record breaking temperatures, not by 0.1, but by 2 degrees, 3 degrees in some areas, that's uncharted territory for, for the Earth. The last time the Earth was this warm, the sea levels were 6 to 9 meters above what they currently are. So by the time the planet reaches a new equilibrium, uh, the sea level will continue to rise, the ice will continue to melt, and you can just think about all of these highly populated coastal areas, what a six to nine meter uh, sea level rise would, would mean for the populations there. Well, thank you very much for that. We're going to be talking about the emissions gap coming up, but let's now have a look at the latest climate news for November from the Copernicus Climate Change Service. November 2019 was warmer than average, with temperatures 1.3 degrees above the pre-industrial era. It was significantly wetter than average, with heavy rainfall and flooding in Italy and the Balkans along the Adriatic coast. In Norway and the Black Sea, it was drier than average. Meanwhile, in southeast Australia, the country saw very warm and dry springtime weather, visible in this map of soil moisture anomaly, creating favorable conditions for the ongoing wildfires there. Well, now we're going to talk about the emissions gap, and joining me is Yuri Rogel, who's a climate scientist from Imperial College London, and Glenn Peters, who is from the Centre for International Climate Research in Norway. In 2018, we emitted into the atmosphere a record amount of CO2, but here at this event we're talking about cutting emissions. There seems to be a kind of credibility gap rather than just an emissions gap. Yes, there is a credibility gap. Our emissions have been rising for uh, decades and that, uh, the rate of increase uh, doesn't seem to slow down that much. Emissions have gone up about 60% since 1990. Even since the Paris Agreement was adopted in 2015, emissions have gone up something like 4%. So there's a real gap between where emissions are going, the ambition and the political rhetoric. What actually are the consequences of all this extra CO2 in the atmosphere? Well, the physical science on this is well established and really simple. Uh, every tonne of CO2 that we put into the atmosphere adds to additional warming. So every year that we continue to put, to emit into the atmosphere, we add warming, we add risks, and we contribute to ocean acidification. The climate campaigners say that the politicians need to listen to the scientists. You actually are the scientists. Do the politicians listen to you? Not really. Uh, in, in 2015, they decided in Paris that they want to keep warming well below 2 degrees and 1.5. Uh, now scientists are saying what the implications are of that. The implications are rapid emissions reductions, net zero, so no further emissions into the atmosphere by mid-century or shortly thereafter. Um, if emissions are going up again this year, this is clearly not on track uh, with what science says. Thank you very much for that. Well, you can look at all of the data presented in this program on our website, euronews.com slash climate now. And I'll see you next time. Climate Now, in collaboration with Copernicus.